Hi guys, it's ASBYT and welcome back to a brand new video. Now of course, the two biggest, most premium phones of the mark... <sighs> Let's start again. Two of the biggest, most premium brands on the market right now, Apple and Samsung, have released their two big flagships very recently, very close together, so obviously people will want to know which of these two phones has the best camera. Is it the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 or is it the iPhone XS Max? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys with me, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna test these two smartphones to see which, if there is one, is gonna be better for you for smartphone photography. As these are both priced right at the top end of the market, where's your money gonna be better spent? So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Right, so as you well know, the iPhone XS Max and the XS as well, and the XR were all released last week. I've done an unboxing of the Max so far. You can go and check that video out if you want. I've also done videos on the Note 9 as well. Again, you can go and check them out. But if you're very interested in your camera, then we need to know what this puppy, could, this puppy. We're gonna need to know what this puppy can do. So we have here the most expensive Apple phone on the market, and we have the most expensive Android phone on the market, I think. But the main question, is it the Note 9? Or is it the iPhone XS Max? Which has the best camera? Come with me. We're gonna go outside and we're gonna find out the truth about these two phones. So come on, let's go. Right, so as we're looking at the first picture, I just wanna mention two things. One, all of these photos were taken in automatic. I didn't do any manual shots, any pro shots, for example, because I wanted to do this comparison for the everyday user. The second thing to point out is that I generally try to test the cameras as much as possible. So a lot of these shots, as an example, were taken in quite harsh lighting conditions, very tricky on the exposure. I wanted to really test the HDR on both and see which phone actually handled those difficult conditions the best. Now very quick specs, the iPhone XS and the XS Max have a dual 12 megapixel camera. The primary sensor is f1.8 aperture and the secondary lens is f2.4 aperture. And the front facing camera is a 7 megapixel sensor. The Note 9 also has a dual 12 megapixel camera but the primary sensor is dual aperture so it can go from f1.5 to f2.4. This is meant to help with low light situations. And the secondary sensor is f2.4 as well. So the first photo, there's not too much to tell between them. The only main thing, and this will be a reoccurring theme throughout, is that the iPhone XS Max seems to have slightly more punchy, saturated colors. I, looking at the sky, it's a lot bluer on the iPhone than it is on the Samsung Note 9. Some people will say the Note 9 is a bit more realistic and lifelike. It will come down to personal preference. If we do a quick zoom in on the text on the building, you'll notice that it is slightly sharper on the iPhone than it is on the Samsung Note 9. Now we're gonna jump onto the second photo and this is the first photo which is gonna be using the portrait mode or the live focus if you're on the Note 9. The iPhone to my eye seems to be slightly crisper on the lamppost. However, we do have it seems a bit of an issue on the iPhone for me looking through the photos. You'll notice this as we go through. But what you'll notice is the actual blur effect, it's actually missed off some of the brickwork there so that that is clear and it should be blurred. So the actual edge detection isn't as great as it seems on first viewing. Yes, the colors look great. Yes, it's very punchy. But the whole point of that blur effect is to blur the background and part of the background is fully focused. Whereas obviously on the Note 9, that part is still blurred. Some phones will just use the dual lens to do this. Some will use software and processing and some will use a bit of both. It seems like the iPhone is certainly doing slightly more software based blur effect than the Note 9 on first viewing. Then we're gonna go to our first of our front facing selfies. Apologies for all of these selfies. The rock eyebrow is gonna be ever present in all of them. It makes me feel slightly less stupid when taking selfies out in public because no one wants to take themselves too seriously. In this photo, I love how crisp the iPhone picks out the features, especially the facial features, parts of the jumper. I like how zoomed the portrait mode is as well on the front facing camera on the iPhone, as opposed to the Note 9, which is slightly further away. However, I think the edge detection on the Note 9, again, is slightly better than on the iPhone. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now we're gonna quickly jump to some video recording, 4K at 60 frames a second on both. And as you can notice straight away, the iPhone is far better at stabilizing the image. It's a lot more jarring on the Note 9. There is a bit of lens flare on both, but the lens flare on the iPhone does tend to come out a little bit more than on the Note 9. And this will run through again some of the photos you'll see in a bit. So I'm now gonna actually use 
use the sound recording on the phones as well so you can get an idea of the actual inbuilt microphone quality uh, as I'm not using an external microphone and that was one of the big talking points at the iPhone XS Max or XS in general launch was the inclusion of stereo audio recording so again let me know which of the two phones you actually prefer the sound for I will flick between the two so you can get an idea so which one of the two phones actually records the best quality for footage the most stable for footage and of course the best audio quality as well that's what I want to know from you guys Okay, so we're also testing out the front-facing camera as well, and I'm using the microphone on the phones as well, so there's no external microphones plugged in. So again, you're getting an idea of the quality of the sound, and we are walking into the sun, so I'm basically being blinded for you guys. This is great. Again, you can see from these two videos that the actual colors are slightly more realistic on the Note 9, a little bit more saturated on the iPhone, hence the reason why my face looks a little bit like a tomato. Now, of course, we do have the slow-mo on both as well. We have just slow-mo on the iPhone and super slow-mo on the Note 9. One thing to note, the iPhone records slow-mo. As soon as you press record, everything will be slow-mo. Whereas on the Note 9, when you press record, it'll wait for movement within the square on the screen. As soon as it detects movement, it will quickly take a very short section, a short snippet of action and reduce the speed on that one bit alone. Next, we have another standard rear camera shot. And the colors and saturation are far punchier on the iPhone than the Note 9. Again, it comes down to personal preference, whether you want a photo that looks kind of Instagram ready, you could say, or whether you want something that's a little bit more natural. Also, we do have that lens flare, which I mentioned earlier on the iPhone. And it seemed to be any time I was shooting into sunlight, which isn't obviously the ideal way of taking photos, it did lens flare quite a bit. Whereas on the Note 9, we didn't get that as much. Next, we have another front facing selfie. And this one, I wanted to shoot upwards into bright sunshine. I wanted to make it as difficult as possible. And in my personal opinion, again, you may differ. I think the iPhone picks out the colors and the features a bit better. It looks a much more punchy rounded photo. I think it's possibly because I also prefer the slightly more zoomed in portrait shot. But again, let me know below. And while we're on that same vein of thought, another very difficult photo, the sun shining straight into my face on this bit here, really testing the HDR capabilities and how well the cameras deal with exposure. Now in this photo, there is no comparison. The iPhone wins hands down. The blue of the sky, the clouds in the background, the clarity of the face, the crispness of the jumper. Whereas on the Note 9, it, most of the photo has just blown completely out. We have two shots here of a church, and these are fairly similar, quite hard to tell between the two. If you put them on paper, you probably wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. And again, it would just come down to whether you prefer the slightly more saturated shot or the one that looks a little bit more natural. And pretty much the same when we go to the two times zoom as well. So you can zoom in by up to two times on both of these phones without losing any quality. And both of these shots look great. Now we're going to go to another bokeh effect shot. And this one, the Note 9 actually handled the photo better. The iPhone, again, because I feel it's using more software than actual hardware, it failed to depict the whole part of the flower bush and kind of blended the rear part of the flower in with the background. So we, we kind of just get a bit of a mashed shot. So in this occasion, the Note 9 handled the photo better. Now in this one, again, very, very hard to tell the difference. Even if you look right to the distance in the sky with the clouds, very, very hard to tell between the two. Both of them are picking all the main details out very very well the same in this shot and the only main real difference in this is the actual clock on the top left hand side of the photo but i feel the details of the clock are slightly crisper on the iphone the iphone also came out on top in this next portrait shot of the sign the clouds in the background the sky even the details on the sign just look a lot sharper a lot fresher a lot punchier on the iphone a couple more plant shots here and this first one the lens flare again is present in the iphone and the Note 9 seems to be a little bit sharper on those petals, for example. And that's possibly down to the AI used on the Note 9. It's depicted the plant and it's processed the image accordingly. Now, both phones have great HDR capabilities. 
Well, they'll take numerous shots when you press to take a photo and they will process them together so that they can make the dark areas bright and punchy without overexposing the brighter areas. This one again, the only real difference is the iPhone gets the sky a little bit better in my opinion, a little bit bluer and slightly sharper on those clouds. And the least said about the Note 9 on this phone box photo, the better. Again, it's completely overexposed the sky, whereas the iPhone handles the situation a lot better. And here we have a photo of Dottie. And in my opinion, the facial features come out crisper on the iPhone, but the edge detection is better on the Note 9. The software around the ears, for example, on the iPhone just look truly pretty poor. I don't feel that any phone at this end of the market should really struggle with edge detection. And I do feel that the iPhone has a bit of a glaring error in this department certainly on first impressions anyway. Whether this can be changed with software updates, for example, I don't know, but certainly I feel it does need to be looked at. And like I said earlier, another thing that I feel needs to be looked at is the lens flare issue. And yes, if neither of these could be changed, it could be a bit of a glaring issue. Now we have some low light photos here. Let me know which of these two you prefer. And one final low light selfie to finish. Just got back, I didn't. We'll edit this. Right, so hopefully this video has been a big help for you. Let me know what you think in the video description below. Out of the two phones, which do you think came off better in that comparison? I will also be doing camera comparisons between the iPhone XS Max and the OnePlus 6. And I also have a bit delayed, but I have the Note 9 versus the OnePlus 6 camera comparison coming very soon as well. I have all the photos for that. I just haven't got round to finalizing the video, but we'll try and get both of those videos out for you this coming week. Like and share if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video on anything tech, pretty much daily content here on YouTube. I'll love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Take your TP's out.